And so tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. What's up, Dragonfly Swarm? Kuki Shinobu has finally returned to the Raid Up banners, and she has a reputation as one of the most valuable four star characters in the game currently for certain archetypes. Which is funny because I remember when she first came out and nobody played her. Look at her now, Shinobu haters! Anyway, she's a staple teammate for all things Hyper Bloom and acts as one of the best Electro options, even above most of the five star Electro characters in the game. So, naturally, this video will explain everything you need to know about the god team that is Kuki Shinobu Hyper Bloom. Bloom in 5.1 Genshin Impact, including why it's so strong, why Shinobu elevates it beyond its typical strength, how to build the team, and what teammates work best for maximum strength. Before I begin, if this video helps you, please like and subscribe, and I won't have to find you. I mean, <laughs> who would say that? That's, that's crazy. Uh... So there are several significant reasons why Shinobu is widely considered one of the best characters for Hyper Bloom teams. The first, being the most obvious reason, she is an Electro character whose abilities are very good at conveniently triggering Hyper Bloom seeds. Her skill pulses periodically in a ring around your active characters, so you literally just kind of have to be close to the Bloom cores, and then the rest is all done for you. You should note though, this convenience does kind of have a limit on it. What I mean by that is only five Dendro cores can exist on the ground at any given time. And even then, there's a limit to the amount of Hyper Bloom damage instances you can dish out every 0.5 seconds, and that limit is two. Which means even if your Shinobu's skill pulses on five cores all at once, only two of them can actually deal damage every 0.5 seconds. But low key, that's totally fine because Shinobu's skill ticks once every 1.5 seconds, so she won't be wasting damage from her reactions anyways. But some other small things to note, in case you were unaware, yes, Hyper Bloom missiles have an AOE, so they can hit multiple enemies if they're clumped really close together. Together, and they can also technically hurt you too, but that's only if you're not minding personal space. You'll rarely ever take damage from them. But yes, Shinobu is great at triggering these little explosive seeds, and as cool as that is, there's more! Shinobu happens to be a healer as well, and since her healing scales with elemental mastery and is quite strong, she can consolidate the role of the Hyper Bloom trigger and the team's dedicated healer with zero drawbacks, allowing you to utilize your other team slots for far more aggressive picks. This simple fact that Shinobu is a reliable healer while maintaining all of her Hyper Bloom effectiveness gives her Hyper Bloom teams in particular some of the highest damage ceilings in the game. For comparison, Raiden Shogun is another very convenient Hyper Bloom trigger, but she cannot heal or shield, so you typically need to waste a team slot on a dedicated healer or shielder, which gives her less flexibility for certain high DPS teammates that Shinobu has full access to. That isn't at all to say you can't use Raiden or other potential Electro triggers if you so choose, but Shinobu is undoubtedly the most convenient one in the game, and it's not really close. So now you know why Shinobu herself is so strong for the Hyper Bloom archetype, but why are Shinobu's teams considered some of the strongest in the entire archetype? Or rather, why is something as simple as her consolidation of a healer and electro trigger so significant? Well, as I briefly alluded to a moment ago, having an extra free slot in your Hyper Bloom teams allows for a significant boost in versatility and damage potential, because the extra character could be someone like Yelan or Singcho or Beto or any number of characters who have significant off field damage while not disrupting Hyper Bloom reactions. But this versatility nowadays is much more enjoyable than you might have initially assumed because now you have game modes like Imaginarium Theater where you do not get to choose what teammates are at your disposal. So the more flexible your team can be, the better off you'll be. And I'll be honest, there are a few teams in the game as flexible as a Shinobu Hyper Bloom team. As long as she has some Dendro and some Hydro to help her out, she'll be all set to deal immense reaction damage no matter who else you bring, as long as they don't disrupt her reactions of course. Another thing to consider in this regard though is that Hyper Bloom teams are very budget friendly in general. It does not take much at all to bring them online, and they stand even today as some of the strongest reaction based teams in the game. Shinobu alone is already a 4 star, but even some of her best teammates in this archetype, like Singcho for example, are also 4 stars. And even if you don't have the more expensive options she loves having, characters like DMC, Beto, Candice, Sucrose, Fischl, etc. can all act as sufficient substitutes to enable her reaction damage and or provide good options field DPS. Even further than that though, the builds that most of these potential teammates require don't even need to be expensive in order to support the team. For example, your Dendro teammate really just needs to be able to consistently apply Dendro and shred resistance, and so their build itself doesn't need to be generally one specific or one expensive thing. Even the Hydro teammate generally follows a similar rule. Having the extra personal damage is nice, but even characters like Singcho can get away with running more supportive base sets and gear if you so desire, and it won't impact the core 
poor damage in this team. The ease of use, flexibility, and inexpensive entry points of this Shinobu Hyper Bloom team make it highly accessible across all content in the game, and yet has extremely high investment potential if you wish to clear content faster. So, now that you know all of the general reasons Shinobu is so good in Hyper Bloom teams, and why her Hyper Bloom teams in particular are so standout, you should probably be looking into building her, and it's really simple. When you're building Shinobu for her Hyper Bloom teams, she will always be the one triggering Hyper Bloom seeds, so it'll always be her elemental mastery that increases the damage. So naturally, you should focus virtually all possible stats into her elemental mastery. The only other stat she even remotely cares about in this team is HP for some extra healing from her skill and other kit scaling, but you'll never really need to use her burst, so ER isn't exactly necessary. Her best artifact set will always be 4 Piece Paradise, because the direct buffs to Hyper Bloom damage outperform even her old best in slot, 4 Piece Guild of Dreams, which just gives a truckload of elemental mastery. So if you're cool with the fact that the domain is resin inefficient since the other set is niche, I'd recommend farming for this set first. Otherwise though, 4 Piece Guild of Dream is still a great alternative, and it's totally cool to keep it on her if you've already got a spare set. Regardless of which of these two options you settle for though, you'll want elemental mastery main stats on all pieces. For weapons, Shinobu has several really accessible options at her disposal, which should help players at all investment levels. Her best is Freedom Sworn for its massive EM bonus and buffing passive, but Key of Kajni Suit can work well too, and if you have it, Zevos' Moonlight is an amazing 4-star gacha sword that helps her EM and her team's energy needs if that's something you require. But even if you don't have those, Iron Sting is an amazing EM alternative and it's craftable and you only need one copy because she's only using it for the EM bonus, not the passive. Tokabo Shigure is also an event exclusive weapon that she can use in place of Iron Sting if you prefer, but they perform almost identically. Alright, once you have your Shinobu built, it'll be time to consider some of her best teammate synergies. Not necessarily diving into full team building quite yet, that'll be a little bit later, but rather the really intricate synergies that she has with certain characters. For example, her banner mate Nahida. Nahida is widely regarded as the undeniable best Dendro character in the game with regard to reaction based teams because her kit is designed to simply enhance such teams. Her skill provides convenient and consistent Dendro application, and in the case of Shinobu Hyper Bloom teams, Nahida can act as an amazing on field driver of Dendro application, especially if you've got lots of Hydro application in your team to further warrant this playstyle. Other amazing synergies exist too, however, like Sincho. Not only is he a 4 star character that I'm sure most players have at least one copy of, but he's also one of the strongest Hydro units in the game and fits amazing in Shinobu Hyper Bloom teams because of his high Hydro application and respectable off field damage. As long as you have a consistent source of Dendro application to keep up, you can get quite a bit of extra value from Sincho's kit, and he pairs phenomenally with something like a Shinobu Nahida baseline or a Shinobu DMC baseline, etc. Another very similar synergy worth noting is obviously Yelan. Yelan functionally is quite similar to Sincho, with great Hydro application to provide Shinobu with lots of Hyper Bloom potential, but also great off field damage and damage percent buffs that your team can make good use of for extra personal damage on top of the bread and butter reaction damage you'll be dealing. Her damage percent buff does not affect Hyper Bloom, by the way, it just affects personal damage. To pivot the direction a little bit though, the last major synergy I wanted to mention before we jump into the actual team building is Shinobu and Alhatham. If you have Alhatham, running him in a Hyper Bloom team with Shinobu as your trigger will give the benefit of consolidating all the healing he'll need, but depending on how you fill your last two team slots, it can benefit Alhatham or Shinobu's damage in many different ways. It's a flexible team that places Alhatham more toward the center of focus, but Shinobu still acts as a powerful Hyper Bloom trigger, and thus is an amazing team core all around if you wanted to utilize it. Okay, so now that you know about some of the most notable synergies Shinobu has, I'm gonna round out the video with a full guide on team building for her by explaining her most notable teams in 5.1 and what their strengths are. Starting with pure premium Hyper Bloom. This team features Shinobu, Nahida, Singcho, and Yelan, and makes use of several very important synergies. Shinobu, Nahira, and Singcho obviously open the door for frequent Hyper Bloom damage, and if you build your Shinobu right, it'll make up the majority of the team's damage with a huge average DPS. But also, with Yelan here, not only is Shinobu's healing being buffed by Hydro Resonance, but Singcho and Yelan's joint off-field synergy introduces a huge extra source of personal damage for Nahira to further enable while she drives the team from on-field. That all makes this one of the most potent single target reaction damage teams in the game. I call this team in particular the premium Hyper Bloom team because it is generally one of the most expensive variants, but even a standard Hyper Bloom team with Nahida, Shinobu, and any suitable Hydro unit can be similarly powerful. Obviously too, free to play Hyper Bloom teams featuring Shinobu, any suitable Dendro character, and any suitable
suitable Hydro character can be powerful if you don't have Nahida, but they'll typically be a bit more complex to pull off rotations since Nahida is the one that makes it all so convenient. If a pure Hyper Bloom team is a bit uninteresting to you though, and you happen to have Alhatham or even Kanich in some weirder cases, there are still very powerful options at your disposal. One of the most powerful iterations of all Hyper Bloom teams, or rather Quick Bloom, is the Alhatham Archon Hyper Bloom team, where you run Shinobu with Alhatham and round the team out with Farina for massive buffing and decent hydro application, then Nahida for Dendro Resonance, Deep Wood, and off field damage. Although Hyper Bloom reactions will not be the main damage source of this team thanks to Farina's slower rate of producing Bloom cores, Shinobu still plays a nearly irreplaceable role here with her ability to help Farina generate fanfare, enable Quick Bloom, and adequately heal the team. Aside from the more obviously free to play friendly variations of this team, the other notable Shinobu variant of the Alhatham Quick Bloom archetype is once again the double Hydro, Singcho, and Yelan variant. Funny enough, this team variant in particular works really nicely with Kinich too if you'd rather run him as your on field dendro driver instead of Alhatham. I think you kind of get the point though. These are all of the most notable areas of Shinobu's Hyper Bloom teams, but you can run her with nearly any combination of characters your heart desires so long as they enable and do not disrupt Hyper Bloom reactions, and you'll notice your Shinobu can carry the team a long way, making it convenient, flexible, and above all, powerful. Oy. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. That is why Kuki Shinobu is the coolest character Hoyoverse has ever released. If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe so I can catch you in the next video.